We're talking about imposter syndrome this morning. This is courtesy of my mother. Oh, well, it's courtesy of her Facebook account. Um, but this was the inspiration. Um, no one's laughing, or she'll be so upset. <laughs> Get your glasses out. Okay, so, first task. We've got a Mentimeter task for you. Please get your phones, your laptops out, your internet and enabled devices out. We're going to be using Mentimeter, so could you please go to menti.com and use the code that is very small on the screen. I do apologize. I was trying to go for a format that was uh, going to wake us up on, in the morning. So menti.com 572316. 572316. And then if Tom could segue over to the actual site. Thank you. 572316. So three words to describe imposter syndrome, please. You can tell we haven't done the session before. <laughs> what springs to mind? Because my aunt had a really weird response to this, so. Ah, oh, we're getting responses. They're starting to come in. We have one. We have two. Hey, okay, right. There's 30 odd of you, so keep going. Please. What words? Anything, anything. So fraud, debilitating, authentic alien. I think you've got a really good idea about what we're going to be talking about today. Good. This is excellent. Bluffing and where are they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is, it is. Um, well, I wrote down imposter on, on my bit of uh, paper, my <coughs> sticky. So, unworthy, fraud, debilitating, fake, paralyzing, excellent. So, our plan is haha, <laughs> for Tom to uh, tweet this later. Um, Let's get back to the, the show because please keep going if, if ideas are still flowing. Got a stand up, sit down exercise now, please. All stand up. <laughs> We're all friends now that we've done this. We've, we talked about failure yesterday. We're all friendly. We're in a safe space. Please sit down if you felt like an imposter at work in the last year. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, okay. Didn't expect that. Please sit down if you felt like an imposter at work in the last five years. <laughs> wow. Alan, last man standing. <laughs> Woo! You've been in your job too long. <laughs> it may be that. Okay, so, can we have some definitions of imposter syndrome, please, for Tom to write down? Just ideas, ideas, come, please. We need some energy, come. Intruder. So you've just written them down on the Mentimeter, sorry. Intruder. Intruder. Come on, please, please. Out of place. Out of place. Out of place. Feeling you shouldn't be there, was that? Okay, so intruder, yes, out of place, feeling, I was just remembering that, that we're recording. Um, feeling like you shouldn't be there, outsider, fraud. Okay, very good. Um, any more for any more, please? Astonished at the blindness of others. Astonished at the blindness of others, that's beautiful. 
Okay. Well, we'll I'm just trying to think on. how that that all, all of it, so. how that that links in with the literature. Okay. So the OED de definition, first of all, I spelt the word wrong, and this affected my literature search, but it didn't actually, because <laughs> most of the literature spell spells it E-R. So our, the title for our session is Impostor, but the OED definition is Impostor. So one who imposes on others, a deceiver, swindler, cheat, now chiefly one who as assumes a false character, or who passes himself, of course, off as someone other than he really is. It does actually. Actually, that that um, yes, that's more that's closer to what my my aunt thought, and she's eighty five. Uh, she thought it was all about yeah, pretending to be someone else. So imposter syndrome and imposter phenomenon, the persistent inability to believe that one's success is deserved or has been legitimately achieved as a result of one's own efforts or skills. Lexicographers in the audience will note that these are drafts, so these 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 are in progress in the OED. Uh, and doubtless this workshop could influence these definitions if you wanted to, <laughs> to submit further, further examples. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. My, so Andy approached um, this kind of topic by giving his personal examples. My approach to this kind of thing is to look at the literature because that's how I'm trained. And um, yes, so the title for this slide was, uh, even though... Um, it wasn't on your CV, you still got the job. So this is how this, this little putty tack got the job. So from the literature, I looked at the librarian literature because there's a huge separate body of stuff on PubMed about clinicians and the medical world. Uh, so that is there. And I had a quick look at that and went, oh, OK, we've only got a small uh, amount of time to talk about it. So I focused on librarians. Um, but even so, we have to talk about the phrase imposter syndrome, which uh, imposter phenomenon, which was originally coined in a 1978 paper by two psychotherapists, Clance and Imes. So the phrase indicates the belief or the feeling that one is an imposter, and it is used to designate an internal experience of intellectual phonies, which appears to be particularly prevalent and intense among a select sample of high achieving women. Women who experience the imposter phenomenon maintain a strong belief that they are not intelligent. In fact, they are convinced that they have fooled anyone who thinks otherwise. And these authors link it to the social expectations of women and the fearsome venture of women succeeding in our culture. So that's 1978. What's changed? And it's a bit hard in this kind of arena to, or this particular room, to see if there was a gender divide. But um, Andy started to bring in the gender di dimension yesterday, talking about failure, which is something we didn't think about when we were presenting about professional failure at Ehill last year. Um, someone in the group brought that up. So why is it a problem? <laughs> why would we be talking about it today? There's a paper from 2015 by um, someone called Faulkner, who writes of the HR implications, which was up on a sticky yesterday um, that arise if librarians succumb to this syndromal phenomenon. But uh, there's a wonderful paper from 2015 by a bunch of people uh, led by Clark who argue that the fear of being discovered as an imposter by supervisors leads to anxiety, lack of confidence and other psychological distress, as well as demotivation, procrastination, feelings of stress, anxiety or burnout. Woohoo! Um, these authors found little literature in 2014, so five years ago, about IP uh, and librarians, so they did their own research. They surveyed librarians from colleges and universities in the US and Canada using the Harvey Imposter Phenomenon Scale, which I can't say, along with their own questions. They had 352 responses, and they found out that, stat, one in eight librarians may be experiencing IP feelings to a significant degree. So there weren't any uh, differences in response between the genders, but as the age of respondents increased, the average IP scores decreased, and that's what's illustrated by the data in this table, just for data freaks out there. Their conclusion was that new professionals who are in the first three years of employment reported significantly higher IP scores than their more experienced colleagues. Now, I'm not sure what our stand-up sit-down has proved about that. Hmm. If most people sat down, uh, uh, 
because they'd felt it in the last year, and that would include myself. So this data would imply, though, that um, the group of newcomers into the profession is more at risk, although maybe our exercise has proved that, otherwise wrongly. So another paper, Rake Straw, 2017, she made the link between imposter syndrome, perfectionism and failure, as well as the fear of failure. So her paper features this wonderful diagram um, of the imposter cycle of success and self-doubt or fear. So we've got being assigned a project or task, immediately thinking that you're going to be uh, discovered as a fraud or a failure. So you go into your coping mechanism, don't you? So I was asked to do this workshop and I've overprepared because that's just what I do. And I still can't present properly, but I am just winging it. Um, you successfully complete your project or your task, but then you, you believe that any success is because of your coping mechanism. So that reinforces the cycle. Fantastic. She also describes five types of imposters, uh, as up on the slide. So we've got workaholic imposters who over-prepare in the hope of achieving a perfect goal. I think that's me and quite a lot of my family. Uh, lucky duck imposters, they believe that they owe their successes to luck, not personal attributes, and believe that their luck will one day run out. That's my sister. Uh, con artist imposters who think that they're manipulating others into thinking they're better at something than they really are might be my ex-husband. Chameleon imposters who conceal themselves so as not to attract attention to their inadequacies. Maybe some of my colleagues, don't know. And procrastinating imposters. Uh, so these guys put off situations in order to avoid potentially failing at something, which is something I also identify with. Right, so I was, we were talking about failure last year and I found this amazing paper about a session which was held two years ago at the Ontario, Ontario Library Association Super Conference in Toronto, Canada, at which library professionals, there were about 80 of them, uh, were encouraged to talk about their experiences of imposter syndrome, burnout and stress. So this is, uh, there's a paper by Lacey and Paulette Stewart who wrote this really great paper about it. They link imposter syndrome to new professionals as well as do um, some other people, Carlisle and Brulbrook, in a paper published last year about emerging librarians. So we can have a chat about that. Um, so Lacey and Paulette Stewart say that there are three reasons why imposter syndrome can develop right from the start of your career, right in library school. Firstly, these institutions provide little guidance on how to transition to the workforce. Secondly, when new professionals start their first job, they often experience the let me show you to your desk approach, which is what I got uh, when starting a first professional post. And this is something that Faulkner describes in the 2015 paper. So you don't get adequate orientation or mentoring. I had a terrible induction plan. Uh, it, yeah, we've improved things since then. And this leads to a demoralizing sense of isolation and pressure to succeed. Third reason, the lack of clarity in the scope of one's position. And that comes up time and time again in the failure literature. Feedback, another recurring theme. So Lacey Pilot stewart report that the participants of their mega workshop also described a lack of consistent and constructive feedback in their professional careers. Uh, so one quotation from the Clark et al. survey. I know objectively that I'm good at my job, but I get little to no sincere feedback from my supervisor. This makes me question if my work is really valued by my institution or not. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, another theme in the literature is the link between starting a new role as a leader, specifically a leader, or starting a new posi uh, position, uh, because this leads to lack of confidence in one's abilities, um, which can be isolating. And this can also hold us back with projects and with self-promotion, because we are really good at downplaying our professional abilities. On the flip side, some other people who I've referenced at the end, Ramsey, uh, Ramsey and Brown, remind us in a paper published last year that we have a duty to help students who are experiencing imposter syndrome by encouraging them to find mentors and like-minded allies, building their confidence with information literacy skills and creating inclusive atmospheres. Okay, so I'm going through this very fast. What can we do about it? So I picked out some solutions in the literature for new professionals. So Clark et al. from 2014 recommend that supervisors look out for new librarians, offer support, and they highlight the importance uh, for individuals of reporting all positive feedback. 
And this point is reinforced by many key authors, uh, stemming from Clance et al's, uh, Clance and Ime's paper, original paper. So right from 1978, we're being told, record your positive feedback, because it'll make you feel better um, and give you that, that sense of self-belief. Lacey and Paulette Stewart refer to the lack of guidance from the library schools about transitioning to the workforce. So this is something that we can think about and be aware of, uh, providing those decent inductions as well as cl providing clear remits and job descriptions for all staff with obvious indicators for success. For all professionals, so as lot, so clients at IMS um, offer their therapeutic as, uh, approaches as solutions. So they, obviously they're psychotherapists, so they talked about, or they recommend talking about your feelings, sharing your feelings with others. They also recommend role play activities, which we did not think we'd try today. Um, <laughs> And that's a recommendation that other authors make. At the Ontario Super Workshop, when uh, participants were linking this syndrome to poor feedback, so that's another area to develop and improve on, consistent and constructive feedback uh, for everyone. And they also have a bunch of affirmations. There's a beautiful appendix which uh, has lots of different solutions. So I printed it out. They've got six different bits and bobs. So in their appendix, they've got a list of positive affirmations that you can tell yourself. So I have the talents and qualities to be successful. I acknowledge my own self-worth. So you can read that to yourself every morning. <laughs> Where am I? Uh, blah, blah, blah. And keeping a success log. So yes, again, keeping a success log to note all your big and small successes, which is something I do just out of routine. Uh, so Faulkner from 2015 and Rakestraw uh, 2017, they both recommend that we learn from each other. We take proactive steps to be engaged in the profession by reading papers and participating in webinars and workshops. Um, and we avoid make, uh, mistaking an experience with a lack of qualification. So we, this will help us to realise that we're not alone, we're part of a wider community. Um, and we know also, of course, that time will, will help everything. Time will tell. Time and experience. Okay, so the other thing is get, a support, get support from a mentor. That's something I always do. Hello, Tom. Um, so with a mentor, you're meant to be able to be open about your feelings of self-doubt and feeling like you're an imposter. And of course, if it goes really, really badly and you're in dire straits, then counselling or group therapy is recommended. So I've got references at the end of the slides. I've got a resources sheet that I printed off because I'm over, um, over preparing. Uh, and everything will be available at the, um, via the UHMLG site and tweets. I've talked enough. Good Lord. Please talk in pairs for five minutes about your experiences in imposter syndrome. Okay. Okay, okay, thank, you. thank you so much. We've got more material. Oh, yes. Task two. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for talking so much. Task two. I might be shouting too much today. Sorry. Um, we did have an all stand up and around. Stay where you are. It's fine. It's fine. Could you talk at your table for the next five minutes or whenever we think that it's all dwindling down about the dangers to mental health, please? Go. Okay, thank you so much. Right, we're going to move you on to the next task. Task three. Right, taking my cue from uh, Mr. Priestner, I'm going to make some of you move, not all of you. If you're sitting at a table that has a flip chart and a pen, you're in the right place. If you aren't sitting at a table with a flip chart and a pen, please move, move to one that has. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, these six tables. We need six groups for this. It doesn't matter how many people there are in the group particularly, so just go where you feel like going. So we need people to move around and talk to each other at the table. Okay. Now your task in this exercise is we're going to give each group a particular perspective on imposter syndrome or imposter phenomenon. And we're going to ask you to think about possible solutions. Um, so this is the interesting part of the workshop. And I'm allocating these purely in the order that people are sitting. So what group you get is basically random here. So these are topics that I picked out from the literature or that came into my brain. And 
And because you've got a flip chart and a pen, you may have guessed that we would like you, if you wouldn't mind, to record what you say. And we hope to have time for you to be able to share that with the whole group. So if somebody in your group is prepared to report back, that would be great. Okay, off you go. You've got until we say stop. Probably about, probably about eight minutes. I'd yeah, say. eight minutes is good. That's a good compromise. Let's quickly do a report back because we're um, starting to run out of time. So maybe let's just ask each table to say the situation that they were asked to, to think about and give us what's maybe their key point, their key uh, learning from, from it. And I will scribe these on the board. So let's start here. Uh, your role, uh, librarians working with newly qualified staff, the question, uh, how can we help and support newly qualified staff members to feel confident in their abilities and to recognise and avoid imposter syndrome? Uh, key thing is, <laughs> so many key things. Uh, the, uh, yeah, uh, gradation of the complexity of, of, of the task, um, don't throw them into the deep end um, and give them achievable tasks. New librarians, ah, we like achievable tasks, that's very fair. Okay. Complexity, let's put it at the deep end. Okay, the role is, my name is Sylvain, the question was, how do we start supervisor to support these staff members to feel confident in their abilities and to recognise the void of positive syndrome? So, really we thought a clear reduction plan so people know what they're doing the role benefits the organisation to so clearly understand where they That is something I hadn't thought about. Um, one, one of the group mentioned about they had, when they started somewhere, there was a presentation <coughs> on imposter syndrome <laughs> for new um, students. And so everyone might feel that, and it's common, and everyone's in the same boat, which we thought was really good. Um, starting off small and building up a good task, giving a clear remit, training, mentorship schemes, um, and You're amazing managers. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. Splendid. Moving on. Group three, describe the situation you were thinking about and your main solution. So your role, someone taking on a new role, say a first management or supervisory position or similar, and the question was, how can individuals like me be aware of and avoid imposter syndrome? And I think most of what we talked about brings it down to retaining a sense of perspective or as Alan puts it, uh, consider that today might be the day you die. So <laughs> how bad can it be? <laughs> it's all about stoics. <laughs> so yesterday was no one died. And today it's today I might die. So what the hell? Let's just have perspective on new job, new life. Good. OK. Thank you, Marcus Aurelius. <laughs> um, group four. Fab. That's great, thanks. Moving on quickly to group five. 
out of those, which of those is the most important? What do you mean by genuine feedback? Um, I think it's Ken Ray Allen saying something about people not being sincere. Yes, yes. I get this a lot. Right, so specific feedback. I think they do that in parenting manuals as well. You did that really well, clearing up your bedroom, whatever, whatever. Yes, using it as an, an example makes it genuine. And then that, yeah, it's more measurable. Authenticity, Authenticity yes. Okay, and finally, group six, your, your main point, please. You had a tricky one. It was yes. oddly worded. Sorry. Changing a job description is so complicated that why would you do it? Um, so we've talked about having more clear clarity in a job description, but also the flexibility to make changes so that it's not too prescriptive, yeah. but not too woolly yeah. as well, so that you, you know what you're doing, because then that allows you to measure whether you're doing it well enough. A clear job description. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is that new job description or is that now the new Does it have to be in the job description? Does it have to be in the job description? Let's, let's, um, on that note, drama. We've got a last Mentimeter task, please. So, now that we've talked and talked... Three words, again, to describe imposter syndrome, imposter phenomenon. So the code this time, 555336, which is a bit too close to my mother's phone number for comfort. <laughs> One second. That's a different one. Whoops. Oh, we've got a different code. Which code is it? <laughs> one second, so sorry. We're always going to have technical problems. That sounds, that sounds good. Yes, please. We just can't pull it up. We may need to enter some words. We'll display this later on. Let me write that. Right. 
I'm not going to be able to get that up right now. I will talk over that and um, we'll just ignore the, the snafu. Um, what am I going to talk about? Right, so I went a bit overboard. I've got 30 copies of my, my lovely resources sheet. If you guys would like a piece of paper to go home with and scroll on. Uh, amongst that, I've included this reference, which is on the slide. Where are the slides? I am a true librarian. Uh, so, so thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, links on the handout. Uh, another, this is again, this is not from my mother, but this is to come full circle. Uh, just out recently was this freely accessible open access paper by Barker in this vet mag journal about who do you think you are, which Tom really liked because it's got a cat on it. Um, again, the, the reference is in the handout or it's freely available at this link when you see the slides. So that's got some solutions and some ideas. And then, yes, links and so on. And I've also got a copy of the appendices from the Lacey Pollitt Stewart paper, just in case you're super keen. Thank you. Thank you very much.